Augustin Trebuchon was born in southwestern France in 1978. He had four younger brothers and sisters. His mother would die when he was young and so would his father, nine years later. He was a communal shepherd and played accordion at local village marriages before volunteering for the army on the 4th of August, 1914. He joined the 415th Infantry Regiment as a messenger, where he would serve in the 2nd Battle of Marne and at Verdun, Artois and the Somme, before arriving at the Ardennes towards the end of the war. He was said to have been a good soldier, having always achieved his duty, of remarkable calm, setting the best example to his young comrades. As a messenger, he knew the armistice had been signed before the rest of his unit. He went to warn his fellow soldiers, who were currently attacking the Germans. He was shot and killed at 10.45 with the following message in his hand. Muster at 11.30 for food. Marcel Toussaint Turf was born in the east of Belgium in 1893. Marcel was an insurance inspector before the start of the war. He volunteered in 1914, fighting to defend his home country under the rule of King Albert I. He would spend most of his time fighting in the trenches, eventually taking courses in France to become an officer. But when he obtained the rank of adjutant and returned to the front, too soon to become a second lieutenant, he would ask to be demoted to corporal so he could fight alongside his fellow soldiers who he spent years fighting with, as they had become his closest friends. Marcel was given the status of miracle as he survived murderous battles, illnesses in trenches and gas attacks. On the final day at 10.42 a.m., three soldiers would be mowed down by German machine guns. Marcel was one of those three. A bullet had punctured his left lung and he would die at 10.45 a.m., just 15 minutes before the armistice came into effect. George Edwin Ellison was born in York and would later live in Leeds, both being in the north of England. He first joined the British Army in 1902, but left by 1912, becoming a coal miner. Marrying his wife Hannah in Nottingham, just before the outbreak of the war when he was recalled back to the army. He would fight in the Battle of Mons in 1914 and many other battles during the four long years. Scouting near Mons, where Germans had been sighted, at 9.30 a.m., George would be shot, making him the last British soldier to die in the war. Coincidentally, his grave faces the grave of John Parr, who was the first British soldier killed during the war and died at that first Battle of Mons. His wife, Hannah, and his four-year-old son James would only learn of his death just before Christmas. George Lawrence Price was born in the east of Canada in 1892. He was conscripted on October 15, 1917. On the 11th of November 1918, his battalion was chosen to lead the attack near Mons. Their battle would advance rapidly and pushed back the light German resistance. At 9am they would receive a message that the armistice would come into effect at 11am. They had two hours left to go. George and his fellow soldier Art Goodmurphy were worried that their battalion's position was exposed to the Germans. They took a patrol of five men over to houses in search of possible Germans. 
They searched the houses one by one and found Germans mounting machine guns along a brick wall overlooking the canal. The Germans opened fire on them, but they were covered by a brick wall. The Germans began to retreat, aware that they were surrounded. In pursuit of the Germans, George was shot, dying at 10.58 a.m. Just two minutes for the armistice came into effect. Henry Gunter was born into a German-American family in the eastern United States in 1895. Gunter didn't enlist into the war straight away when the US joined in April of 1917. He was drafted on September of that same year and would be promoted as a supply sergeant, arriving in France in July 1918. He sent a letter back to a friend in the US advising him to try anything to avoid being drafted. This was intercepted by the army and he was demoted from sergeant to private. Gunter's squad approached a roadblock of two German machine guns in a village in northeastern France. Gunter got up against the orders of Ernest Powell, who was his sergeant and his close friend. He charged the Germans with his bayonet and fired shots at them as he got closer. The German soldiers tried to wave him away, but he got too close and they shot him. His fellow soldiers said the following about Gunther. Gunther brooded a great deal over his recent reduction in rank and became obsessed with a determination to make good before his officers and fellow soldiers. He died at 10.59 a.m. with just a minute left to go.